and action. Hi, how the fuck are we doing? Are we good? Good? Okay, good. Welcome to the Pretty Princess Command Center. I thank you all for reporting to duty in a timely manner. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. We're almost ready to go. Guys, how the fuck are we? Are we doing good? Good? Ha! I hope we're all having such a pretty princess day because you deserve it. Let's get down to business. Also, first and foremost, thank you all for all of the love on the first episode of the Pretty Princess Commands Tenor. Tentatively titled. We have so much more to get into today. I don't even know. Here's the kicker. I don't look at what we're going to talk about for the day. So like if you think that this is like planned out and like I've already decided what I'm going to talk about, I literally have no idea. This is coming straight out of my ass. So I look at the little Google form that you guys send your shit into and I go from there. Okay. Number one. Hi Bessie, how are you doing? I am so good, how are you doing? Let me introduce myself, I'm 23 and I'm from Argentina. Sorry if my English is bad, never apologize. I've never ever apologized for that because you are doing so much more than you think you're doing, first and foremost. Um, also, second, that's so cool. You're from Argentina and we're talking? Look at us, I'm in Florida, you're in Argentina and we're speaking, that is glorious. Um, <clears throat> The subject I want to discuss with you and get your point of view on is friendships in this age. It's getting more complicated for me to rely on people at this time. So few of my friends usually show up. Most of the time I am the person that always plans little activities that lead to anything. I only have two friends that I could really rely on and I get and I get really sad for one example. I see people going out or just my boyfriend inviting me to his group of friends and that he sees every other week and I feel left out of that. I'm grateful for my two friends and that I get I'm grateful for my two friends and I'm grateful that I get along with my boyfriend's friends but how to not feel bad for not having my own group of friends to just chill on a Friday night play cards I don't think I'm a bad person so I don't get why friends don't make me a priority they always have better plans to do and such a busy schedule I know as we become adults we have other responsibilities and I'm obviously trying to focus on myself and my growth but it's nice to have a support group or people to hang out with and talk to is this normal to see your friends once every two months Sorry for it being so long. Lots of kisses. Lots of kisses back. Don't apologize for the length of that. Also, your English is not bad at all. Um, so basically what I'm getting for this is that you just feel like everybody else has a friend group and your boyfriend has a friend group and you're just kind of like, where the fuck is my friend group? And you have these friends, but they don't really show up for you in the way that you want them to. This is not the only dilemma on this situation, so I'm going to kind of overview all of them. Somebody else said, what is your advice on friendships? I am a very, I'm very social, especially at work. I have some friends that we go get drinks or dinner, but I don't have a best friend, but all my friends do. I end up feeling really alone. I have a Mr. Special someone that is my best friend at this rate. I just know how good it is to also have friends outside of my relationship, and I'm just sad to not have a girl best friend. Is it bad that my boyfriend is also my best friend? We don't spend 24-7 together. We have good boundaries, and we will go to hang out with a few of his friends when they come into town, and I'll go have drinks with some of my friends. So same situation, like you both have Mr. Specials, you both have a few friends that you'll go out with occasionally, but like you're you're kind of missing that like core, like this is my person that I can rely on er like all the time. Okay, the other friend situation that's kind of in the same lines as this, it says, when do you know it's time to let go of someone? To be brief, this girl went from my best friend to a stranger. We've been through so much together and I'm fully aware she doesn't treat me like how a sister should be treated. I don't know, it's hard. I love her so much, but I need to start respecting myself. This is all basically figuring out how the fuck to navigate friendships and relationships. I'm gonna assume in like your 20s time, like late, like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and up okay so I'm gonna assume that's like the age we're all at we're like in between like 19 and 27 I'm just gonna assume that um <clears throat> so for the first two the not feeling like you have a genuine friend that you can rely on not feeling like you have a friend group that you could constantly like oh let's go out to dinner and like you have like three or four friends and you guys all get a table and like just not feeling like you have that person in your life I completely understand it I'm very lucky and I do have a long-term best friend we've been friends for like eight or nine years however like I do feel that lack of genuine friendships just because I really like I have her and I have a few other friends that like sprinkle in but they're not really friends that I'm like texting every week to hang out with or like trying to make plans with or like we try to meet up every Friday night and I feel like especially with social media you're definitely seeing all these girls that are most likely a lot of them that you're seeing are most likely influencers that have kind of been grouped together just because of the job so like when you're looking at that kind of see that more as like a colleague situation so like let's say like there's there's a pretty like prominent group of 
influencers in New York and they all seem to always be like hanging out together but like also if you really look at like where they're hanging out together it's not like they're inviting each other over to their apartments like it's more so like okay like this brand invited us to this workout class so we're all at this workout class together this brand had a dinner for us you know what I mean so if you're looking at influencers and feeling like oh well all these influencers have all these girlfriends and stuff wipe that away wipe that away because like sure are a lot of them genuinely friends of course they are and like are they going to hang out outside of brand events of course they are but it's just a really good thing to remind yourself when you're looking at social media if that's what's kind of making you feel like you don't have as many friends as you should have just kind of look at that and just realize like okay well they're only all there getting all dressed up getting all dolled up getting dinner getting drinks because that's literally their job. They're literally networking. They're doing their job. And then if you want to go and like look at all the shows and the movies, like you have Sex in the City, you have Gossip Girl, you have The Carrie Diaries, you have Friends, like you're seeing all these friend groups live their lives, right? So that's just another thing that your brain is telling you like, okay, this is how it should be. But in reality, like even this, like this was like three people just here, just here, like this cute little pretty princess command center that we've created. That, and me, and like that's, us for being like hey like why the fuck do we not have a big group of friends like why don't we have like our ride or die best friend that like we could call anytime that you know what I'm saying so just a reminder you're not alone let's start it there you're not alone so many people experience this so many people understand exactly what the fuck it's like and it's such a weird time period too because especially if 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 I'm correct and my if my assumptions were correct and we're all kind of in between the ages of like 18 27 like this gap right so especially more towards the like 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 time period it's kind of a weird period because you're transitioning out of like high school so you, you don't have like your high school friends anymore you might but they're not your people that you see every day in class they're not the people that you see at the per like same parties you're going to you're not seeing that at the, at the football games you know that kind of stuff and then so like you're going to transition into college maybe and maybe if you're not transitioning into college and maybe you're staying home and you're doing whatever else like everyone just kind of scatters because it's like all through school you've known the same group of people and like obviously like sure people move away people move too so like you're meeting new people you're losing people but all through school you're you're given this group of people that you like you're like oh yeah that person i know them i know them i know them and then it kind of all stops and you're like wait 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 what the fuck like why do i not have friends anymore you do have friends do not force friendships forcing friendships is the stupidest thing you could do ever it doesn't work and it'll just drain you however go into new friendships thinking this person might not be my best friend this person might not be the person that i can have come over at midnight and we could just sit on the couch and stay up watching our favorite movies eating snacks in our like ugliest rattiest clothes don't go into like new friendships thinking that that's what you're gonna get because i feel like if you put that expectation on a friendship going into it and you don't get it you're just gonna be really bummed out and it's gonna kind of like dishearten you and make you not want to try again i don't think it's a bad thing to be best friends with your mr special i really don't with your special person like it is so amazing that's the whole point like that is like your locked in built in best friend right like because yeah obviously you like them in a romantic sense but it's also your best friend like me and mr special like we're long distance so i don't really get to see him a whole lot like i haven't seen him since january um but like we're best friends like literally anything that happens throughout my day like i'm gonna tell him about it just like how i would my best friend and it's great and i love it and i'm so happy for the girl that said that you like to hang out with him um i think it's amazing that you have boundaries i think it's so good that you have these like set boundaries is like well no we're not gonna be together 24 7 but like of course like you're my best friend and i'm gonna hang out with your friends when they come into town like we're gonna do this together we're gonna make time for each other like this like my my most recent example of like finding a new friendship it kind of fizzled out and we had known each other like we knew of each other just from like mutual friends but like we had never hung out or anything we never really met formally so she reached out to me and was like oh my gosh hey like whatever and then I was like okay perfect and we ended up hanging out a few times but it was kind of just like it 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 wasn't a match and I could have like sure I could have like kept hanging out and forcing it but like honestly like I just didn't feel that good being around that person like I just didn't feel like I could be 100% myself like I didn't feel like I could just like express myself the way that I want to wanted to express myself I didn't it just wasn't what I was looking for in a friendship but also it's like if I saw her at a mutual friends event or like party or whatever, we would say hi and we'd be able to talk and we'd be able to be civil. So I think 
really just like in this age it's just kind of weird because it's like you have a lot of acquaintances and you might still run into people that you used to be friends with you used to know really well and now you don't and it's just like it's harder to find like a best friend outside of school because school like forces you to meet people it forces you to share common interests with people it forces you to be around people like that's usually how you find your best friends but then like let's say you move away and you're not where you went to school like what are you what are you gonna do now you know what i mean i think as far as friendships go like you really just need to be willing to meet people like it's you you just need to be willing to put yourself out there to meet people for example i can take this advice because there's this girl that goes to the gym in the morning literally this morning i was in the sauna after a workout okay and there's this girl in there and I could have easily just started talking to her and been like, hey, like, I see you here a lot in the mornings. Like, if you're interested, like, we should totally grab coffee sometime. Or like, oh, hey, here's my Instagram. Whatever. You know, just, like, little things like that. And, like, I, I was this close to doing it. But then I was like, nope, she doesn't have her phone in here. I, like, all of her stuff was right outside the sauna. So it was like, she doesn't have her phone in here. Her eyes are closed. Her AirPods are in. Like, this girl is probably, like, meditating right now. Like, she's probably, like, relaxing. So let me not bother her. But just, like, little things like that. Just, like... I could have gone up to her while she was on the treadmill and been like, oh my gosh, hey, like, I see her all the time. Um, I would, you know, like, I would love to hang out sometime. Like, you, you look like my type of woman. You know what I'm saying? I think as far as friendships go, like, you just have to be really willing to experience new people for what they have to offer. And not in like, oh, what do you have to offer me? But just like, don't go into it thinking like, I'm looking for a best friend. I'm looking for this. Go into it thinking like, okay. This person seems like somebody that I would enjoy spending my time with, even if it's just an hour of your life. Go into it. I'm going to enjoy this hour of my life. You either will enjoy it or you won't enjoy it. It's literally like dating, but way less stressful because most girls in their 20s, I'm going to say, are feeling the exact same way. I feel like too with boyfriends, boy relationships are so much more surface level than girl relationships. Like me and my best friend, we have been best friends for eight years, okay? Love her to death, love her to pieces. We are polar opposites. So like, sometimes I really do crave like a friendship group that's a little bit more like aligned with me. Like me and my best friend, like literally after I'm done filming this, I'm gonna go over to her apartment. We're gonna cook. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna put a documentary on and we're gonna do a puzzle. I don't really have any group of friends that like would understand like, okay, we wanna do our hair. We want to get dressed up and we want to go to a little speakeasy together. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have that. So, like, I'm missing that. And I, I'm i missing the group of friends that I could have where I can, like, pull out my vlog camera and vlog for YouTube and not have them be like, oh, you're vlogging. And I would, like, I'm missing the people that could be like, oh, yeah, like, let me talk to the camera. You know what I mean? But I think with guy friendships, like, especially if you're watching your boyfriends have these friendships and, like, the friends are coming in town, like, it seems like guys are so much better at sustaining relationships and honestly like they are it's just because they're not as deep as a lot of like woman relationships girl relationships and i think what makes it hard for us is because like okay when i meet somebody i want them to be my best friend like i want them to be somebody that like i will literally like my kids and their kids will have play dates with you know what i mean that's how like, i go into friendships whereas most guys go into friendships with very much like oh he's coming cool and that's it like literally that's it like like if if you're if if a guy made friends like okay let's say let's say tyler and brad are friends and they made plans to go golfing and then brad invited chad and troy tyler would be like oh okay now they're all friends now they all will literally go golfing for the rest of their lives girls girls wouldn't do that to one another girls would be like hey let's go get coffee okay that would be the plan or it would be hey me and so and so like i would love for all of us to go get coffee boys are so much more like whatever it doesn't really matter like i want to golf so i'm golfing whereas girls are like well i thought i was getting coffee with you and only you so we could talk and we could become friends but now you added these two other people here so now you know what i mean like we're, we're constantly like thinking about all that so i think the best thing you could do for friendships in your 20s Turn on your fucking guy brain, okay? Think of it lightly. It's not that fucking deep. Like, it, it's really not. Just just extend the offer. Just extend wherever you go on the daily. Like, wherever you go weekly, wherever you go daily. Let's say you go to the same coffee shop to do your homework or to, like, do whatever at the same time every Tuesday. And you see the same girl there every Tuesday at the same time. Go up to her and be like, 
hey like i see you here all the time just wanted to say like you're so pretty um i am definitely looking for friends like i would love to have some more friends let's hang out um i can almost guarantee she won't be a bitch about it unless she is in which case that's a rare case and that's not somebody you want to spend your time with anyway but you know what i mean like you just have to be willing to extend that offer and that invite and honestly like if a girl came up to me at the gym and just just think about how happy you would be if a girl came up to you and like was like i want to be friends with you here's my instagram let's plan something i would be absolutely so happy especially if it was a complete stranger like my the one of like the only places i go every day is literally the gym so like i'm thinking of like all these girls that i see in the gym every day every morning and like if one of them came up to me and was like oh i love your gym outfit let's be best friends i'd be like oh my god okay perfect let's do it so just like little things like that also don't think it's you unless you generally like in, unless you genuinely are like a, a shitty person and a bad friend i don't think you're the problem like i don't i honestly don't like sometimes like things happen friendships fizzle out friendships fade like sometimes if if friendships take too much work like some people are just not gonna want to do that like we're we're humans we're literally designed to take the path of least resistance so like let's say your two best friends that you were saying how like you don't really see them that often and like you kind of only see them on a monthly basis and you can't rely on them if it's like too hard for them to hang out with you then yeah like they're gonna stop hanging out with you because it's just it, like you know let's say if you invited your two best friends to dinner every Friday night for a month straight and every single time they said no even if you gave them a week's notice or two weeks notice whatever and they said no but then they like did something else you're gonna stop inviting them you know what I mean so or like let's say you want to go to the club but you're you know your best friend wouldn't want to go but that's what you're into right now at the moment like that's your idea of a good time and her idea of a good time is staying in ordering takeout on a Friday night she's not gonna want to go you're not gonna want to invite her because you know she's gonna say no she maybe will start to feel like oh like they don't invite me anywhere anymore you know what i mean so just don't think too hard about it i think so many girls experience this so many people are like yeah like how do you make solid friendships and i really feel like like it's just a weird time and i think you just need to be appreciative of the people that you do have in your life don't try to force it you have friends and sure maybe you don't have friends in the way that you want to have friends but you do have friends you do have some people that you can rely on the uh two of you you have mr specials that are you guys are best friends with and you have their friends so maybe like ask him if one of their friends if they have girlfriends be like hey can like we plan a double date i would love to meet the girlfriend like i was saying in the beginning like just don't go into any like any new friendships any new relationship like don't go into it thinking like this is going to be your best friend don't go into it thinking this is going to be the girl that i can call when i'm on my way to the grocery store and i can pick her up and we could go grocery shopping together don't think of it that way like adult friendships are a lot different than kid teenager friendships like so drastically different and you don't really think that because you know as you're like okay well i'm out of high school and i still have a lot of friends okay well i'm two years into college and i still have a lot of friends so like what's so hard about it but like then you really think about it it's like okay well all these people that i saw every single day in college i don't see them anymore and it's actually really hard to make time to see them because she's going here for thanksgiving and i'm going here and we can't spend it together anymore you know what i mean so just it's this weird middle ground where like you're not a kid anymore but you're not fully an adult with like family friends like you don't have like your kids are playing together so you guys are like automatically friends it's not like your neighbors you know use every opportunity you're given to your advantage and you're bound to make friends like literally at work like um I work at a tanning salon right so like I have a customer service job so like some of the girls that come in there like okay like let, here's my number like let's hang out sometime so just little things like that just don't be afraid to make the first move honestly that's all it is just go into it like okay we might be best friends forever we might literally just have this cup of coffee share a laugh and be on our way scene two action I'm 19 years old and I quite literally have no idea what I want to do with my life in general but mainly what I want to pursue career-wise Everyone else my age seems to have a plan and have had plan for year had have had plans for years, but I feel completely stuck. I work in hospitality at the moment for a filler job until I can find what I'd like to do. However, I'm not sure what interests me enough to run with it professionally. I know each situation is personally different, but what advice would you give me? Um, literally nobody knows what they want to do with life. Nobody knows. Um, I don't care how many of your friends are in college to get this degree, in college to get this degree. 
are already doing this job, are already working at their parents law firm. Like, I don't care. Nobody has it figured out. I do not have it figured out. Listen, uh, nobody knows. Nobody fucking knows. I thought I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I completely 180, okay? Like, nobody fucking knows. So first and foremost, nobody knows. Shut up. Nobody knows what they are doing with their life. And even the people that do know what they're doing with their life, there's some aspect of their life that they're like, what the fuck am I doing? You could literally meet a 50 year old with a stable job. They are like CEO of the company, but they literally have no idea what they're doing in their love life. They have no idea how to be a parent. They have no idea, how, you know what I mean? Nobody knows. It, it's the point of life is to just fucking live. It's not to, oh, I need to know what I have. And I know, I know, like, of course, to live your life, to like be a, not like to be a productive functioning member of society everyone's like oh you need to know what you want to do you need to know what you want to do what do you want to do for the rest of your life what do you want to do that when are you going to do your retirement plan like all that stuff right um nobody knows nobody fucking knows i promise nobody knows you work in hospitality at the moment for a filler job until you can find what you like to do first of all pat yourself right on the back because you know how many people literally go into like existential spirals about not knowing what they want to do and they literally just like let it take over their whole lives and they don't even like try to figure it out you're trying to figure it out so that says something that shows enough like ambition like you want to figure this shit out okay what makes you happy what makes you happy literally boil it down to that because it seems like you're in this perfect situation where it's like i'm doing this because i don't know what i want to do with life that is a beautiful place to be in because can you imagine doing something that you hate and being like, well, I know that I don't want to do this, but you have to do it anyway because you signed up to do it. That sucks. That sucks. Those are like the people that like they, they were forced to go to college and study in a field that they literally hate. Like the, like imagine, let's just imagine like you literally cannot stand the sight of blood, but you were forced to go to college to get a medical to, to get a medical degree and become a surgeon. Like, can you imagine that? Like, aren't like if that was your options, like if your option was like, okay, I hate bones, I hate blood, but I have to go to college, I have to get a medical degree, and I have to become a heart surgeon. Or, I maybe am taking a little bit longer than I originally planned to figure out what I want to do with my life, but I have a filler job. Which path are you choosing? Realistically, which path are you choosing? Because I know you're choosing the one that you're on right now. So, first and foremost, you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now in life, or else you wouldn't be here. Because literally, do you think, do you think it's even possible, like, can you even fathom a world in which you would be somewhere where you're not supposed to be no because how, how could you even like perceive that how could you even think like oh I'm not supposed to be doing this right now no because if you weren't supposed to be doing it right now you wouldn't be doing it point blank period that's the end of that story let let's talk about it do you think when um I don't know fucking do you think that the plastic surgeons in the world who do boob jobs every day went into this world at the ripe age of zero and continue to go through school and was like yeah I want to be a plastic surgeon yeah actually I know that I want to be a plastic surgeon do you think realistically all of them thought that no do you think a lot of them are happy doing what they do of course they are we can boil it down why do they like to do that for me personally I think I would rather die than be a plastic surgeon I don't I can't I couldn't even pierce your ears if you asked me to. I cannot imagine fucking cutting people open and like rearranging their shit and putting it back. Okay, what, like realistically, what do plastic surgeons do? A lot of plastic surgeons can, they make people feel a lot more confident about themselves, whether it's just like an aesthetic purpose or like let's, like they, they help people live a normal life again. Like let, like if, if there's a trauma victim and something terrible happened and they needed their face reconstructed or like they needed their arm reconstructed, like something like that. Like a lot of these people, like th like surgeons at the end of the day, they help people heal. They help people get better. They help people feel better about themselves, okay? Boil that down. What I would like to think that I do because that's what I enjoy doing. I like to think that I help people feel more confident. I like to think that I help people be inspired to be a better version of themselves, okay? A plastic surgeon does that, and I do that. Two completely different fucking things. What do you like to do? I know you have hobbies, I know you have interests, and you don't have to boil it down. Oh, I like to go to the gym, I like to paint. No, no, no. What are your hobbies and interests? Take all of the physical world out of it. What do you like to do? Do you like to debate? 
I used to love to debate. I used to I used to think I was going to be a fucking lawyer because I used to love to debate. I used to like love just like proving facts and be like, yeah, bitch, this is my shit. This is my argument. And I just want it. I used to love that. I hate it now. Can you imagine if I had gone to school to be a lawyer? Like I feel so grateful that I didn't just like jump on the first thing that I thought I liked. And if I still like, obviously I didn't jump on it because look at me now. I literally couldn't think of a job that I would like rather have less. I don't want to argue with people all day. I don't want to debate. I don't want to fucking research all day long. That's not fun. That doesn't sound fun to me. And um, what would I be doing? Realistic, I literally used to want to be a criminal justice prosecutor just because I was like, I want to be able to put bad people away. I couldn't even imagine a world in what I'm like, wish I'm doing that. Like I would so much rather spend my time being able to like share my thoughts and inspire people and make them feel more confident and make them feel more secure and make them feel happy. I'm so happy I'm doing that. And here's the thing. If I were meant to be a criminal justice prosecutor, where, where do you think I would be right now? I would be a criminal justice prosecutor. That's exactly where I would be. That's not where I'm meant to be. That's, that's why I'm not there. You're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Nobody knows what they're doing. I felt that way because when all of the people that I graduated high school with, 90% of them went straight to college and I was like, I don't want to do that. Sorry, I do not want to go to a four-year university. I literally almost did because of the peer pressure. I literally like had everything signed up and like I did like tuition deposits, everything. And I was like, oh, never mind. I don't want to. Never mind. Give me that back. Give me that back. And thankfully, my mom was understanding enough to be like, okay, like if you don't want to do it, you don't, you don't have to do it. But like, you can't just sit around and do absolutely jack shit. So like, what do you want to do? But like, yeah, like I almost fell for it. Like I almost was just like, wait, wait, wait. Like, should I go to college? Like, should I do this? Like everybody else is doing it. Like, so it seems like I'm behind in life because I'm not doing what everybody else is doing. No, 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 no. And you're literally 19. Hello? Hello, you're 19. I'm going to assume you graduated high school, what, last year? Hello? You're, I know you feel old because like you're 19. You're not 18 anymore. You're not in high school anymore. Coming from a... 23 year old i know it's not old but when, when i was 18 the thought of being 23 that was old as fuck don't worry it's like literally the best advice i could give you is don't fucking worry if you want some inspirations the best thing i can tell you is literally just focus on yourself like focus internally focus on what you're doing inside focus on how you feel focus on how you're showing up in the world if you focus on that, a lot of like good things start to happen and a lot of good opportunities start to present themselves and you start to just understand yourself a whole lot better. I think one of the best books that you could read, I think you really just need to fill your time with things that help you understand yourself better. Like truly just figure yourself out and it'll help. Like, every, like everybody always says it, like whatever's out here is a reflection of in here. So if you don't know yourself fully, you're not gonna like, you're gonna be confused out here too. You just have to like, you have to make peace. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. Having a filler job is not embarrassing. Also, being completely okay with where you're at in this current moment is literally the biggest tip I can give you. You have to be so okay with being exactly where you are. Accepting the present moment for what it is, is the only way that your future can unfold the way it's gonna unfold. The best example I could give you this, I remember when I was how old was I? I? I was like 20, 21, and I was working at a golf course as a beverage cart girl, okay? It was a private country club, so already you're getting like country club type people. You're getting kind of like stuck up people that expect you to go to college, expect you to be in school, expect you to have a really nice job, okay? Every single fucking person was like, oh, so, like when I was new, almost every single person, oh, so are you in school? Like, what are you studying? Where, where are you going to school? All the same questions. I was like, oh, I'm not in school. I'm, you know, I'm per like, I do social media. I do social media. I do social media. Like, oh, I'm a content creator. I do social media. And this is when I was trying to get a following. This is when I was trying to get established. So I was so insistent on like getting that external validation. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not in school, but like, I have another job. I have another job. Don't worry. And like, was it paying me at the time? No, fuck no. It wasn't paying me. I was just literally taking all the money that I was making at this country club and I was buying so many clothes. One, to fill a void because I was sad because I wasn't doing what I was passionate about. Two, to be able to have clothes so that I could start making fashion content, right? And I remember the moment that I was like, I don't know why I'm trying so hard to like prove to these people that I am doing something more 
than just this like beverage cart girl job. It was literally my insecurities being like, oh, these people are really rich and they're really wealthy and they all went to school and they're probably looking down on me because I'm just like a server and I'm just serving them drinks and you know, they're paying me and like they're probably like thinking less of me because I don't wanna go to school and like all this. That was my insecurities projecting onto these people. My insecurity of being like, these people are thinking less of me because I'm not in school, because I don't have a job other than serving their beer on a fucking golf cart. Once I stopped doing that, once I was like, wait a fucking second, these people do not need to know that my life goal is not to be a beverage cart girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't need to fucking know. And I think the minute I stopped trying to prove so hard that I was working towards something and I was trying and I was getting there and it wasn't happening yet. And the moment I stopped trying to prove to people that I was doing something more with my life, that I was on the way to getting out of this little filler job that I had, that was the moment that everything started to fall into place. Cause I wasn't so consumed with like, oh, like, what are they gonna think with me? Like, what, what are they gonna think of me? Like, I have to, I have to let them know that I'm not just doing this. Like, I have to let them know that I'm doing more than just this. No, you don't. Chill the fuck out. Chill the fuck out. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Just, just relax. Relax. It's okay. And scene. All right, let's prepare for our last scene of the day. Okay, last one. And action. I entered a new relationship back in February. We've known each other since last November though. And started it and started seeing each other after Christmas break so it's only been like three months four months maybe um, for my junior year of college I'm going on exchange for a semester back home in Canada we're in the Netherlands right now and my partner really wants to do long distance when I leave in August okay so I'm assuming you met this person in the Netherlands. My partner really wants to do long distance when I leave in August. Am I the asshole for being unsure, not really pro long distance, given the six hour time difference and price of plane tickets? I just don't particularly find it realistic. If we do decide to do long distance, do you have any tips and advice? Okay, first and foremost, I'm gonna assume, okay, junior year of college, so you're probably like 21, like 20, 21, 22. Um, if you don't see this person in your life for longer than like a year, honestly, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. A six hour time difference. Me and Mr. Special Someone have a one hour time difference and we're only a seven hour drive away. Granted, yeah, seven hours is a pretty hefty drive, but we only have an hour time difference. Um, a six hour time difference, that means that when it's, I can't even fucking calculate this. So when it's one in the morning for you it'll be like seven in the morning for them or vice versa that's crazy i i think you could definitely make it work if that's something you're really willing to do however i will say if you're already thinking like i don't find it particularly worth it i don't think you should do it i'm gonna be so honest if you're like super head over heels in love and like you can envision literally spending your life with this person go for it but i think putting that pressure of yourself and like kind of like it's it's not really realistic like like okay my senior year boyfriend my senior year of high school he was going to college four hours away from here he was going to college four hours away from where i live i knew for a fact I did not want to participate in the college life. I didn't want to go to frat parties. I didn't want to go to fucking like formal parties. I didn't want to go to uh, college games. Like I knew that I didn't want to do that. I was okay not having the college experience. He wanted the college experience so bad. He wanted to be in a fraternity. He wanted to do all those things, okay? I knew, okay, eventually there will be a point in time in this relationship that will come between us. That will cause us to break up and it's going to hurt so much more of like the unknown factors of the distance that's gonna cause so much more pain and grief than just calling it before it even starts so when he moved i think we literally dated for another week we had been dating for like nine months and i think he literally was there for a week and i was just like no like we gotta call this like i i'm not doing it because i'm not gonna be in a relationship where 
you say you're gonna come home for the weekend and then like your fraternity is having like a spur of the moment surprise party and now you can't make it i'm not gonna be in a relationship where something like that is gonna start to drive a wedge between us so i just called it before it even like happened and i'm really grateful for it in hindsight like did it hurt was it shitty was i sad was i heartbroken of course i was especially when you end on good terms it's so hard because it's like we really cared about each other and we could have like made this work because like we did have so much love for each other but the like life does play a role in relationships like I feel like people are so quick to be like oh like it's true love and you should just no because life is still a factor and what I was saying before like if it's meant to be it's gonna be like you wouldn't be where you are right now if it wasn't you know what I'm saying but I think already if you're having doubts and you're having just like okay like I don't even know if I want to do this like it doesn't seem very worth it to me I think that you should probably just listen to your gut feeling you should listen to your intuition also just like thinking about it like what about when you and the girls want to go out for the night and let's say they're all single but you're in a relationship but it's a long distance relationship or let's say they're all in relationships so you don't get invited to the double dates because your double date is fucking like six hours time difference and a flight away from you you know what I'm saying so honestly <laughs> I don't think it's a smart idea to stick with it unless of course you know your relationship way better than I do obviously I don't know it at all I only know this little tiny snippet of what you've given me but like you're so young I don't think you should be wasting your time not I don't want to say wasting time but like I don't think that if you're already concerned about it which is such a valid concern a six hour time difference is crazy because realistically like you're probably making like regular college age person money like you're definitely like just working a regular job you're probably like you're gonna be juggling a job i'm assuming you're gonna be juggling classes your friends your family your hobbies and a relationship but not only is this relationship a relationship it's we have a six hour time difference so whenever we plan phone calls we have to plan accordingly um and we're making college money so we have a college budget i'm gonna assume it's not like it's not like logan and rory and gilmore girls when logan is literally like oh let me buy you a plane ticket whenever you want like it's not like that i'm gonna assume um but if you do decide to go long distance my biggest piece of advice don't overdo it with the communication every day me and mr special someone we've been trying to figure that out for a little bit like because we've been long distance for a little bit over a year but like at first we were like texting every day like just it was it was like a little bit too much because like you need to live your own life like you can't just be like da -da 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 all day long you know like you have to live your own life you have to do your own shit they have to do their own shit so like it got a little bit like okay well like i don't want to talk to you and then because you're in a long distance relationship you don't really want to bring up any like problems because you're like well i don't want to bring up problems because we don't even see each other like how can we have problems if we're not even seeing each other and like i don't want us to have our time that we do talk be me bringing up problems so but like little problems they start to boil and like you start to build a little bit of resentment so then that happens and you have to deal with it the best thing that mr special and i have done for our long distance relationship is we plan a date once a week if not twice a week we try twice a week but again we're, it, life gets busy like i have my friends i have my life i have my schedules i have my routines he has his routines we plan a date and i don't mean just like oh like i'm in my bed and you're on your bed and we're gonna facetime like no 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 like I, i'm gonna put an outfit on i'm gonna do my makeup i'm gonna go to a mexican restaurant he's gonna put his outfit on he's gonna go to a mexican restaurant he's gonna order a margarita i'm gonna order a margarita we're gonna cheers we're gonna order at the same time like we go on a date i prop my phone up on facetime we usually like to sit outside because you know restaurants are allowed inside but, like we try to do something like that once a week if not more than once a week and that is honestly like the best thing because then it's like okay i'm not on my phone one because i'm on facetime two i'm not distracted like if i were in my bedroom like it's so easy for me to just like pick up my laptop and like start editing or start doing whatever i'm doing for the day you know like i'm distracted by regular life things whereas if you set aside a specific time and a specific place to just be like one-on-one -on -one date with each other gorgeous it will literally flourish it'll be so healthy for the, your relationship i'm just trying to think of a six hour time difference like in what world because also like in the middle of the day i guess so it's like okay so it's basically almost bedtime your time and it's kind of like the evening is starting their time or whatever it is so like four so like four o'clock in the afternoon for them would be 10 o'clock at night for you or whatever it is but just for an example 
So I, like you could make it work, it's just not really sustainable. But I think my biggest long distance tip is communicate every little thing, and this goes for like regular relationships too, but like especially long distance has taught me this, communicate every little thing. Like I don't care if you are gonna sound crazy, I don't think if you, I don't, I don't care if you think you sound crazy, like oh the way that you hung up that phone call, like are you okay, you seem like a little bit frustrated. Say that, because you're gonna feel these things, you don't have them in person to like feel their energy, like it's so much easier to feel energy like in person because it's like if you say okay love you too over the phone that sounds so mean but if I say like okay love you too you could see like I'm like trying to carry a million things up the stairs like you could see why I said it that way you know what I mean especially if if you're gonna move back to Canada I'm gonna assume they don't like know your space like if you guys are gonna be somewhere like let's say like you are you're going back to Canada I think they're in the Netherlands. That's what I'm gathering from that. It's like that's where you met them. Or maybe maybe I'm wrong. But like I'm gathering that you're going to be somewhere where they're, they've never been. So like they have no concept of what your life looks like. So like me and Mr. Special Someone. Like before I had ever gone there to where he is. I didn't know what he was talking about. He was like oh I'm going to go to this place with so and so. And I'm like okay well who's so and so. I've never met them. I don't know who the fuck you're talking about. What's this place? I've never been there. I don't know what it is. Where is it? Like, give me a general, like, and not, and like, not to be like, oh, like, where are you, where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you with? But like, literally just because it's common courtesy. And if you were in real life, he, he knows when I tell him I'm going to the gym, he's been to the gym that I've been at. So he knows exactly where I'm going, how long it'll take me to get there. X, Y, Z. He like, when I say like, oh, so-and-so and I are hanging out, he knows that person because he's met all these people before whereas like I don't really know his world because I don't live where he lives and I never have so when he says oh I'm gonna go to the gym I don't know if he means the gym five minutes away from him I don't know if the gym is 30 minutes away from him I'm gonna go to this restaurant with Mark okay who the fuck is Mark is Mark someone you work with is Mark someone you go to school with is Mark your cousin that I don't know about you know what I mean so I just like really make sure to communicate every little thing and just like be so understanding of the fact that like there is such a gap between like what you're feeling and what you're saying. But anyway, um, so I think that was our final scene. So I'm going to go ahead and scene. We are done conducting episode two of the Pretty Princess Command Center, tentatively titled. Hope you enjoyed. I hope we gained insight. I hope we gained happiness and joy and, and good feelings. Um, so on that note, I'm gonna go, and I hope you have a good fucking day. <sighs>